What is good? Bang. That was crispy at the end. Good good bass in that. All about good that bass. 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 No trap. <laughs> no hetero. Um, we're back. <laughs> Let's go. Bipod. Yeah. Moving into a tripod. Another bipod. Then a quad pod. Yellow no pod. Yeah, we're all over the place on the uh, NFC South here. We're back to give you another... Uh, team recap kind of preview deal here we got uh carolina panthers and the nfc south here got old jay wayne's got your boy cm we're ready to roll we're ready to roll i, I knew that was coming i can't oh i need a sound bite. i knew it was coming um so you know not too much to uh really recap here because for fantasy purposes you know there's really no purpose to dwell on too much of the past they were seven and ten last year and i think you know the defense is something they can uh you know hang their hat on it's a pretty pretty solid unit there um and should be you know kind of improving there and then the offensive line uh pretty solid was 24 at the beginning of last season ended at 15 they're down a spot in the pff projection at 16 um so pretty solid line pretty solid defense and then we got a whole new coaching regime who's the uh, damn i'm drawing a blank on the uh defensive coordinator who was there head coach at the end of the year uh, Steve Wilkes Steve Wilkes bang uh, so he they, they didn't think he did a good enough job last year didn't keep him around uh, so the Niners picked him up so he'll probably be a compensatory pick for the Niners in about two years after he has one of the better defenses in the league for the last two years and that's what the Niners do uh, but Carolina uh, like I said Frank Reich coming in like that uh, OC uh, Thomas Brown if you don't know who that is uh, he was at the Rams he was a tight end coach assistant head coach running back coach uh, so had a lot of hats over there. The DC, I am not very familiar with, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name or his first name. A Gino Evero. Um, so come at me in the comments if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't really know who that was. The Broncos DC from last year, and he was uh, the Rams uh, pass game defensive coordinator and secondary coach. Got a little experience there. They, they like him a whole lot. And then Deuce Staley, another noticeable name, is, is the assistant head coach, running backs coach, and Josh McCown is their quarterbacks coach. Parks Frazier, a guy they brought over with Frank Reich, who was a holdover in Indianapolis. He's a young and up-and-comer. Watch out for that name in the future. Uh, Frank really, really likes him. He's a young gun. And then they have no notable other guys, Dom Capers and Jim Caldwell uh, on the staff. Uh, so just two wily veterans there. I just love the way they built the staff out. I kind of like where Carolina's heading here. Uh, like I said, for fantasy purposes, we don't really need to dwell on, mm. on what happened last year all that much. Right. Um, but uh, you obviously drafted Bryce Young. Um, and like I said, the offensive line key to a, to a rookie here. Uh, they spent their first round pick on an offensive lineman last year from NC State and then this year they drafted his his partner in the uh, in the fourth round Chandler Zavala from NC State so uh, they, they are their only issue on the on the line is Austin Corbett uh, who's their right guard who might miss time to start the season and maybe Zavala slides in there uh, but a little bit of a question there other than that very solid across that line you know that leads you into Bryce Young who you give that guy a solid line and I don't think it really you know obviously it would be beneficial to still have DJ Moore and uh, you know a great cast of characters kind of like we're going to talk about with Ritter here uh he has a nice nice kind of line up there with Drake and Pitts and and Bijan but uh, maybe not quite as fortunate here but you know obviously just worlds ahead and processing he's the number one overall pick very intrigued with this guy probably you know would give him the tip of the cap over over stroud right now although lots of good love coming out with stroud it's no negativity from stroud for me i think i just like bryce a little bit better and if bryce was built like your traditional uh quarterback there wouldn't be any questions surrounding this guy and people's it would just be salivating uh at the fact of of bryce young because everything else really seems like it's on the up and up um, outside of the stature um, and really who he has to throw to. That cast of characters being Terrace Marshall, uh, DJ Chark, the ghost of Adam Thielen, um, and then Mingo was a second-round pick for them. And then they have Hayden Hurst, Ian Thomas, uh, Tommy Tremble in there as their tight end. So, you know, no, nothing really jumps out Rick at Wright you. likes a tight end. Yeah. Uh, and then Visca and, and Shai Smith hanging on, uh, you know, on the other part of the roster. Not sure where Visca is going to quite fit in. But Mingo, um, you know, obviously coming in and, and they're saying building nice little chemistry with Young already. And they're, they're excited about him. Um, but, you know, 
I guess we'll start on Bryce Young from a fantasy perspective, kind of in and out on the on the ADP. Like I said, it's it's not super fun group of guys to pass to, but you know I think he'll be just fine this year. Um, and you know I don't think I don't think you're gonna I don't think he's gonna do any damage to himself as far as you know market value for for fantasy. I think he, there'll be enough of like oh shit, and then almost not having good guys around him for. Anybody who has their wits about them will, you know, probably continue to actually kind of help them a little bit as far as value goes. Now, obviously, it would, it would right, it would really help them if, you know, value wise, if there was a good supporting cast. Um, but I, I, you know, I don't think it's absolutely horrible. I still have a little faith in, it, faith in Terrace, um, but we shall see. You have Miles Sanders in there, which you know that was a good free agent pickup in there. Deuce Daly, familiar with him. Um, so we'll kind of get to all that. But right now in the FFD ADP, Bryce Young coming in at, at 212, QB 13. I, I'd say just about properly rated there. Coming below Kyler and Dak and, and slightly above Tua. Now if Tua doesn't have any question marks around him, I don't think that's a question. Tua over Bryce right now. CJ Stroud, then the next quarterback at 15 at 308. So what are your thoughts on on Bryce as far as value and you know, looking towards the future with him. Are you in, out, indifferent? I, I like the prospect. And in a rookie draft, if you're stuck at 1-3 and you can't move up to 1-2 or 1-1 in the super flex, then I'm down to take Bryce right there. That, you know, reflected in the ADPs over Stroud. In terms of a startup, I haven't taken him too many times. I think I did maybe take some third round Bryce Young, if that happens. The second round yeah, Bryce 2-12, Young. 2-12, pump the brakes, 3-1. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All in. Exactly. Uh, it, it's a bummer that they had to move DJ Moore in part of that deal, but it's part of the whole complete rebuild, and they should have a probably a pretty decent pick next year. They can bring in some help. You know, yeah. they did kind of probably overpay Miles Sanders, I think. Uh, eh, I don't know. He got like three times as much money as Swift, if, which if, makes if the he's... Eagles, Howie Roseman, look like a – G to replace at a third of the price, but um, they needed to do something. And right, I think that's a good. I think it's a really good pickup for them and where they're going and what they're going to be doing. I think for this first at least year, um, I don't think you're going to ask Bryce to do a terrible amount. Like I said, you can hang your hat on that defense a little bit. I think uh, the division isn't terribly good, rough, um, and and you know we're we're thinking Atlanta's defense is going to be on the up. The Bucks defense has been good, and New Orleans defense is, is usually pretty good too. Uh, so some decent defenses in there, but a lot of questions around a lot of the offenses as well. So you could have a lot of sub twenty game twenty point uh, games in this in conference battles. Uh, you know what I mean? You know I, I'm I'm in on Bryce. I guess I lean slightly to Tua there. I just. For what you saw, yeah, you're getting the discount with the injury because it's unknown. But what you saw from last year was, you know, there was potential MVP level play from Tua and fantasy points galore. And the well, what supporting an cast is awesome. And the play calling what and the an system offense. is awesome. Um, a little different than here. Um, you put so Bryce in the Dolphins. Probably, you know, it probably might, would take a minute, but it would it would probably be fine. Um, I feel like all of that lineage is like system quarterbacks. Like it doesn't even yeah, matter. I, you, you know, get, the Kyle Shanahan can win with any quarterback. You know right. What I mean? as, as soon as you as soon as, you know, Tua got in there and, and you know, it was it was lights out and everybody I mean, we too. We had a 50 point game. The, the, the two apologists had to come out and, you know, kind of say sorry a little bit. Some of them held strong and then they were like, see, I told you and yeah. playing the old injury game. Uh, well, but, that's the only game that you can play with two right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the startup, Bryce in, in the rookie draft, I'll, I'll take Bryce all day uh, in the startup. I'm a little I'm a little more leery, weary of of going with Bryce. I'd rather have Tua, and probably uh, would be OK with skipping and maybe going with somebody like Daniel Jones a little later if I wanted a quarterback that that early um, and then waiting around maybe for, you know, the likes of of uh Golf and, and Russell, you know, Russ and that little bit later, you know, Gino kind of territory. But I, I'm not going to begrudge you and I don't think you can go wrong. I think his value is going to stay just fine. And I, I think for a year or two, you'll have a window here to, to kind of choose your own adventure uh, with what you want to do. Uh, with Bryce Young there they like Reich is going to come in here and and call plays to start to start the whole year off here and we'll see how long it takes he wants to give the play calling to uh, Thomas Brown there the OC uh, and they kind of have two different systems 
Brown coming from that uh, Ram system, which is a lot of 11 uh, personnel, which is, you know, basically three wide receivers. Um, and then Frank will run 12 and have, you know, all sorts of different kind of stuff going on. So they're going to try to marry those two systems. And when he feels comfortable handing it to Brown, he's going to let Brown kind of take over 11 um, and a half or, yeah. personnel right uh so that'll be kind of all, all things to monitor and keep in the back of your mind as you're figuring out bryce and what to do with them yeah um, i don't think that, they have is, two tight ends or three wide receivers to send out there so this is all something new so bryce could you know they're like i said the, the system isn't great around him and, and if he struggles a little bit early don't be surprised he's a rookie um and and this is you know, it's not like he came into a, a, a steady organization with a with a nice hierarchy of everything. They're trying to build something. Um, and Bryce is going to be a huge cog in that wheel. And, uh, you know, Josh McCown has been praised as as a great coach. So I think he's in good hands with Reich and McCown uh, and the system. So uh, like Bryce, uh, don't necessarily love him. Would you take you'd take Bryce over Gibbs in the in the rookie draft? Yeah. In, okay. this, in this super flex rookie draft, I, I think. In most cases, I would. Yeah. In most cases. Are I you would. down to trade down? I'm okay with it. If I'm in a little bit of a, I got quarterbacks and I'm winning and I'm kind of ready in the win now mode, I'd be fine with trading down. The, at the same time, I don't think you can really go wrong because if you have four quarterbacks, you can kind of, mm-hmm. or even five, let's say Purdy's on your roster and you could control the quarterback market. You know, I don't think that's ever really a bad idea. So I don't think you're in a bad position either way there. Uh, you know, if you're in a complete rebuild, I could see, you know, you could say trade down too and get the more assets. Uh, but, you know, the, the quarterback is always, you know, going to be semi-tough to trade for, especially without giving up another quarterback. So um, I'm with you. Most most cases I'd go Bryce in the startup there and, and probably take Bryce over Stroud in the, or, uh, in the rookie draft. And, and Yeah. So, um, all right, well, let's, Let's get off of Bryce there. Um, let's let's shift over to Miles Sanders. We would normally go to maybe the cast of characters supporting that Young's going to throw to, but since that's not as fun and sexy, basically Miles Sanders. Let's go to Miles Sanders here. Uh, big D, I know, big proponent of him. We've been as a show a pretty big proponent of him. You know, basically coming down to what what we all just said. You know, it's it's. A whole bunch of a little bit uncertainty. We're going to kind of get our feet under the ground. We have a pretty good offensive line. Why not? Let's establish this with Miles Sanders. Um, Deuce Staley has a, has a real strong background with Miles Sanders from his Philly days. Um, so those things, I think, can mesh right up. Uh, as long as Miles Sanders can stay on the field, I think he's going to be very productive. Um, and I think I think from a fantasy perspective, perspective um if he's going to be in that seven four range which is in our adp right where he is rb19 um you know i don't want to go heavy on the running backs in this draft uh and this the way the startup shapes up and the way the the uh, field of the running backs kind of are but miles is the guy who i'm looking to come in and and sure up my running back room whether he's my first or my second he's probably not going to be my third because if i got three by that point i'm probably i don't the draft probably went a, a certain way and not that he wouldn't be uh but a lot of the times he he's either going to be my first or my second and i think i think he's a league winner um at that position there um you know they're working wiener, huh? they're working on the on the receiving game which he he was pretty good at but he had some drops at times um so that's been something they've been really uh getting to work on often and early with deuce reportedly and you know I think just the I, I don't think Miles Sanders is there if Deuce Staley didn't like what he saw and, and didn't put the vote of confidence or, or get in Frank's Reich's ear uh, and say, hey, if we need a guy, this is our guy. Um, so I think all that stuff kind of lines up. Um, and we saw, you know, obviously the, the Eagles offensive line was was really strong uh, this past year. A lot of rushing touchdowns, not all of which went to Miles they right. like to spread it out, including with Jalen Hurts. So right. And, and here, I, you know, it's, I think you're going to, you know, all those opportunities are now doubled, tripled red zone. You know, you're not going to be in the red zone as much potentially. Um, but, you know, I think your goal lines are probably going to miles. Your check downs are probably going to miles. There's, you know, Bryce, Bryce is a good time buyer, uh, but not necessarily doesn't want to scramble uh, per se, but he will. But he's obviously not on Jalen Hurts' level. Um, and nah, I don't, I don't he think, threw it a lot to Gibbs. It's not too dissimilar from Alabama in a sense that he, the best 
weapon that he has on offense is probably the running back. Yeah. So he utilized Gibbs a lot in college, threw it to him a lot. And Miles Sanders is a guy who, who should be a good pass catcher. He came in his rookie year, caught 50 balls. We haven't seen that since. He really plummeted to his low last year with 20 receptions because Hurts is, you know, these Russian quarterbacks, they don't need to dump it down. They'll just take off right. for five. Which Bryce prefers, I think, to, right. to, and that's, to a buy time elude and dump and it throw. down and find the spot. Sure, and that will behoove him because I think it's a successful year for Bryce Young if he – can play 17 games that's really the biggest question mark is can he endure an nfl season at his size can he get rid of the ball can he not take the hits can he slide can he be as smart as he possibly can be take advantage of the nfl rules to not get hurt and if he can make it out unscathed i think him and miles sanders if they're both healthy their value probably is increased. Now, Miles is a little old, 26 years old, probably never going up in ADP. Uh, interesting no, it, discussion of the guys around him. He does seem pretty locked in. Uh, Four to, years, $25 million. Yeah, I'm sure there's an out there somewhere, but whatever. Um, I think you're getting at least two years for Miles here, unless there's a, a, an injury or whatever. That's the little bit of conundrum uh, kind of with Miles Sanders um, and, and you know depending on how you like to go about your draft you could be drafting value based and then trading for your assets or coming into this spot you may only have one running back or none running backs and then I'm okay with leaning towards Miles Sanders he may even be a little higher in our ADP than he is in some of the others because I know Big D will has no problem taking him in the sixth we can check um, the sleeper ADP kind of all day long um, so you know We've, we've talked a lot about this group that's kind of alone, the Terrys, the Godwins, the Flowers, uh, the, the Hollywoods, um, the Dotsons, uh, the Deontes. Uh, so, you know, we like all those guys. I guess I would, in a vacuum, lean towards those guys. So he's uh, 74 in Sleeper's ADP, 76, 76 an hour. hour so, so right around. Who were the guys you wanted? Oh, it was just that normal group of Terry, Godwin, Flowers, Brown, Dotson. All uh, those guys over Miles? Uh, I would say in a vacuum, yeah. yes. But like yeah. wh- when you're drafting you're desperate and, and for you're a saying, running back hey, right there. hey, I played this a certain way. I like my team. I'll take, I, I got no problem taking Miles Sanders there. Yeah. Big D always takes him before I would be ready to. But, you know, and, I, and I'm with you. I think a decent chunk of these players, you know, Swift or Miles Sanders. Miles. All day. That's not even a question. Just because you don't like the Eagles, how they use a running back. Well, I just like to have, they got, they got run, like, they have Gainwell still. They have Penny. They have Swift. They have Hertz. Uh, Boston Scott's still on the team, I believe, you know, and it's just, I, I'm, I'm, you got Miles Sanders is going to be the dude. I mean, I'm just, that I got to take, that's why I want him at that point. That's why I probably, Swift, I like the, I love the player, uh, but he, I can't take him there. Uh, you know, I'm taking all those other guys that I know have a role and what it is. I, R- Swift was awesome, uh, you know, per touch. And, uh, you know, when, when he has the ball in his hands, he's a good player. And well, if you watch the tape, it was actually objectively bad. Whatever. That's bad ridi- comment. It's ridiculous. It's like, no, it wasn't. He's like one of the more efficient players in the yeah. league, which I don't even care about efficiency. But if you do watch him. But his points per touch popping off were awesome. Points he, per he, touch. He's, a, he's a good player with the ball in his hands, working him into space. Um I just, you know, with, was with all a those banged up with. Yeah, for sure. With all those guys around him, I know all those guys have a pretty defined role. And Miles Sanders is going to be that dude. Um, what about it's, Joe it's Chuba? You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. you know, basically, uh, I think I'm leaning Miles Sanders there uh, again, because I, I, even, I know two P-Runs, more years. I know sure. P runs out of there. Um, but, you know, I think some of those P run touches are going to go elsewhere. And I mean, I think. Uh, Mixon can be flat at times. He's a bit of a liability off the field. And they have a really good offense kind of surrounding him, which is, you know, is can, is a plus for Mixon, but also is like, hey, the the Panthers may need to lean on Sanders a little more. Mixon, I don't know how much the the, the Bengals will lean on him game to game. Um, those, NFC, those AFC North games. They can get, you know, and I just, I, I just have a hard time. I like Mixon. Uh, you know, some people's answer, I'm sure, is probably mixing all day. Last year, it would have been mixing all day for me. Just the knuckleheadism, knucklehead, mm-hmm. uh, is you know, and just I, I'm I'm just I'm pumping the. I like mixing where he is below those other guys and below Miles Sanders. Definitely taking mixing over Swift, uh, but you know, give me Miles. And you can take Miles after both Damian Pierce and 
J.K. Dobbins? Uh, Damian Pierce, I can get behind. J.K. has been waxing and waning a little bit for me right now. Cause just because it's just all of a sudden you're on, he's on the pup right now. And he's, he hasn't been at any of the camps at all. And he, maybe there's a holdout. Maybe there, you know, I don't, I don't really know what's happening. And, and just now I, I felt like I was trying to sleuth around and find some. It sounds like maybe he's maybe having another little procedure, um, which, you know, I just there's just a lot. I, it's sh, it should be Dobbins for sure. Stamp it. Love it. Uh, and it was for me for most of this offseason. I felt pretty strong. But now as we're getting closer and it's gut check time, uh, I'm getting a little more bashful on Dobbins. So. Uh, shakily, I'll say yes, Dobbins over Sanders, but I feel more comfortable with Sanders going into the season. Uh, you know, Dobbins is only 24, so you're getting a little bit of a age reduction, but I mean, serious knee issues, and I don't know what the hell is going on. It seems unclear now. Melvin Gordon's, you know, signed over to the Ravens, and I don't know if that's really an indictment on Dobbins, uh, but you know, could just be like, hey. Gus has been injured. Dobbins has been injured. Justice Hill's been injured. Let's we're going to shore this up, and we're going to give Melgo a incentive late of contract. Yeah, that's a worth up to three point one million. But you know the base is probably super low. So um, you know they're just they're just I like that every you know everybody on Twitter as soon as they any other fucking team back gets another running back in their stable because it was like a little unsure or a little you know not a lot unsteady of, well you know if they like that guy then they wouldn't ever pick this guy up and it's like well if they like Damian Pierce they never would have picked Devin Singletary up I'm like what who else do they have like and then you guys don't like running backs because they get injured it's such a wild fucking conversation Twitter is the biggest bunch of bullshit out there it's wild yeah. like, like just all these dudes that get away with the shit that they say out there like it's crazy. I know that that's kind of what it's for, but, you know, it's just... It's for misinformation, Casey. You know, if if this regime didn't draft... And freedom know, of speech. This guy, and, you know, this is... They're, they're, they're clearly, you know, scared of this guy because they're bringing in this guy, and it's like, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I don't, I don't really know, but the certainty in which you're talking with is outrageous. So... And um, for anyone upset about us hating on Twitter, maybe you should get off Twitter. I don't know who's who's possibly upset about that. Oh, people get mad that we uh, throw shade. Yeah, well, which I thought that's what people liked, but yeah, well, the best accounts on Twitter throw the most shade and and, <laughs> all it and is. talk the most fucking condescendingly, oh. and which is you know, which I guess we should just start doing. So whatever. Anyway, Miles Sanders, uh, I'm I'm pretty much all in right now, uh, and you know, Twitter does have. Great. I'm on Twitter for the news and information that you can. You just kind of have to filter some of it out, but you can't help but catch stray grenades from the bullshit <laughs> that you're just that just infuriates me. So, and you know, I used to be mad at the people, or I used to be mad at like guys like Skip Bayless, but it's more the fucking people. You fucking idiots, stop watching that bullshit. And guess what? Skip Bayless isn't the highest paid. Like he sucks. He keeps doing the same shit over and over again. It's a fucking shtick. It's not real. He doesn't really fucking believe any of that. But you idiots keep buying into it like a fucking soap opera. Well, it's entertaining. It's not. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's God fucking awful. God bless America. It's like watching Tucker Carlson. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> oh, he's crushing on the Twitters right now. Well, just not on like not the on news the Fox, channel. Yeah. It's like watching any news. It's all. It's basically that's where sports got it from. Sports was like, hey, the, I don't, the news. I don't mind is, some news with the opinionated these, news. The news is putting up these ratings with this hot yeah. fire opinion this staunch go, shit. Garbage. So we're gonna do this, and that's where it kind of came from. Um, you know, the news shouldn't have ratings. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I mean, the news can have ratings, but it shouldn't have like. The, sh the, the news shouldn't be driven by ratings. I should clear that up. Mm. It should be. This should be factual, what good gets information. Us the most ratings. That's if you want another. News. If you want another channel, it could be the opinion of the news. And not channel. only what gets the most ratings, but which way to spin the story to get the most mm -hmm. ratings is what right. matters the right. most. All right. Well, let's keep it moving here. Chuba's the backup. I like Chuba. If you have Miles, or if you don't, he's he's free. Nineteenth ish round right now in our ADP. Uh, pretty solid player. Um, and Miles has had a little bit of injuries, soft tissues, and and whatnot. Uh, so, I think Chuba, nice little, nice little play there. But again, if they sign somebody in this backfield, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's it for Miles Sanders. I'd be like, you know, well, they fucking have him and Chuba and Blackshear. Like, well, okay, like, what do we got? Nothing. Like that goes in a hurry. Uh, all of a sudden, you're week three, and you're like, fuck awful thin around here. Uh, you Luckily, know, Zeke and Fournette are still laying around, yeah. and Kareem Hunt. 
Their boys um, are getting on a Zoom call to discuss what they should be doing. <laughs> I, I'm good for them. Band together good and quit. Band hold out. Brothers. All Everybody. the running backs just yeah. fucking hold Every out. Every single one of them. See you later. And um, if you cared about your fellow teammate, you should support them too. Yeah, start GoFundMes for them. Like, let's just get a fucking... <laughs> No, but the NFL needs to pay for this shit. <laughs> Fuck this GoFundMe. Yeah. The NFL needs to pay these motherfuckers because they carry the team. Yeah, I understand both sides of it. It's just it's a it's a it's a it's an unfortunate situation that they're in and all of them don't need to get paid, but the best ones who are difference makers should should get their money. But it's set up a certain way and they bargain for it a certain way, so it is what it is. Um, they're trying to get NFL PA for like different positions instead yeah, of just like well, all encompassing but right. Because the running back's trying to go get more. It's going to take some from another position. Oh, man. And they're going to get mad. Yeah. Well, whatever. But they're not doing as much. Your third wide receiver who is trash. He's getting $10 million. Yeah. Adam Humphrey's got so much money. Right. Yeah, we're good with that. Like, Saquon's basically your first or second leading receiver. Like, pay my man. Yeah. Um, Anyway doesn't really matter um it i does. get both sides um for for what we're doing so if we go to the wide receiver room we can start with mingo he's the only one of, of real actual value currently um but bef- you know really with terrace and chark um and visca like i'm buying terrace i know that people will you know oh twitter again with, <laughs> with just all the jokes about how many slot receivers the giants know they have slot receivers already what are we doing all oh, slot receivers <laughs> like all right, man, we Dabble, got it. That Dabble likes us. We got it, man. Like they, they, they don't have like the sexiest room ever, but last year it was dog shit. They had a bunch of injuries, so they brought a bunch of guys in. It's going to be better. And all I'm looking for, I'm buying a bunch of those guys. I'll buy Slayton in the 22nd round. I'll buy Hodgins. I, you know, I'll buy Paris Campbell. What the hell? Well, you know, why not? And the same thing here. I'll buy Terrace Marshall in the 19th round like what are you so upset about with yeah it's not great but Terrace could really break out he's probably going to be on the field a good bit just like Hodgins for the Giants could really be on the field a good bit he's your big outside guy you know Sterling Shepard and and Wandell Robinson are probably going to miss time to start the season Paris Campbell hasn't been the healthiest guy so yeah you got a couple extra slot receivers they're fucking cheap sure pick them up you know (laughs) you know Beasley and 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 uh and uh they Jameson, pick up Cole Beasley too, didn't and they? And Jamison Crowder, they have experience in that Jesus. system. Uh, you know, they they know what they know what they need to do. Um, They're gonna run uh, fifteen person. What is it? Zero personnel? Yeah, zero one. I don't know what it is right now. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> Five so wide. Terrace, the 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 Carolina Panthers are sort of in the same vein with Chark and Terrace with me with with the Texans and the Giants. Where yeah, it's not sexy and maybe it's not fun. But if you're bitching about rostering any of those guys who are absolutely free right now, who could turn into something like, you know, uh, way back in the day when me and Big Co started playing FFPCs, Javante Adams, I picked him up in like the 17th round, picked up Robert Woods in the 17th round, Mm -hmm. picked up a bunch of dudes who were late, who changed teams or didn't come out right away and got in the 17th round. And I know it's not fun and I know it's not sexy, but any of those, te- any of those, any of these guys who have potential starting roles could come out and either score points and be a part of your lineup or, or quick scoop and trade or turn into something fucking awesome. So I'm not really sure what you're upset about. Those guys seem like good dice rolls. It's up in the air. It's got to go to somebody. Terrace Marshall, 19-1 all day long. Chark, 18-5 all day long. The ghost of Adam Thielen. I'm a little less intrigued with that. Uh, but twenty point like two, he's probably going to lead the team in targets. And I don't know if he will. Uh, but we, we shall see. Who are you betting? I, I, I would. I would probably bet on Terrace. Um, Terrace going to lead the team in targets. Breakout season. I Terrace think, Marshall. I think potentially, baby. mostly because Terrace and Shark could play outside, and and where's Mingo going to play? Like where's Thielen going to play? You know, I just. I don't an, an old guy probably needs to be an old guy like Thielen probably needs to occupy your slot. And if he's occupying the slot, what are you doing with Visca and Mingo? And, you know, we can get into Mingo a little bit here. Um, you know, coming in at, at 11.2 uh, ADP for Mingo. Um, and now he, he did play outside a good portion of his career. So he's at 90 percent, 83 percent, 85 percent for the first three years at Ole Miss and then 51 percent in the slot this past year. Now, I know that was because of some injuries at Ole Miss, but once you kind of saw that happen, he was 38.8% in the slot in 22. Um, and weeks eight, uh, eight through 13, he was, um, you know, in, in the slot 40 or more uh, snaps a, a, a ton. Uh, so, and, and during that time, he was career led in yak per reception, yak per route run, and yak all career bests. 
uh, through there. And I know he played the first chunk of that season out wide, which is why the slot number isn't up higher because they had some tight end injuries and they had some other injuries. He even played in line 10% in 22. Um, so they were kind of moving them all around, getting the best out of them. And his ADOT has always been pretty good, but this year tied with the ADOT 14.4 career high um, and was still playing half the season in the slot. Um, so, you know, able to do kind of both both things. He's a big kind of physical guy. He does have some down the field speed. The drop percentage was way down this year for Visca or for uh, uh, Mingo um, and a second round pick. So he's got the capital. <laughs> Um, so, you know, Mingo can kind of, seems like he, he could be a versatile figure. Visca kind of in the same role. So those guys and then Terrace and Chark seem like they could be your outside guys. Chark could be your field stretcher. Terrace could be we know Terrace could play inside and out. So you have some versatility kind of all through that lineup. They're kind of high on Terrace. He's been getting a little bit of love. Mm -hmm. um, so he seems like he could be the the one A out there the, for the most snaps lead the, lead the team in snaps this year. Shit, Hayden Hurst could be the guy who leads this team in in catches. You know, I'm not. I haven't been fucking with Hurst, but he could be that easy, soft middle of the field. He's 35. He's just a wily veteran out there. You know, um, he's he's at ADP 19 and a half. So and I haven't been fucking with him at all. But, you know, that could be a nice little late round pickup if you're looking for, you know, some tight end production. And he's first in line. It's like I said, him, he, him, Ian Thomas and Tommy Tremble. So, you know, who's a who's a rookie quarterback's best friend? You know, tight end can can certainly be that guy. Soft little intermediate middle of the field targets. Maybe Hayden Hurst is, you know. Under underappreciated and underrated, but you know we know Hayden Hurst is going to be an excellent blocker. So again, plus in the offensive line, plus in the in the Miles Sanders category there. So uh, again, like all the cheap wide receivers here, and I like Mingo. Um, fine with Mingo uh, in the early-ish second round super flex tight end premium two three two four two five, um, and then fine with the ADP uh, kind of in that eleven two. Um, he he was a strong. Uh, mover uh, through the draft process because there wasn't a whole lot of it was a bunch of short kings and he was a bigger guy had some versatility can play outside can play inside showed you that like I said with the with those numbers there um, and again uh, you know so at 11 2 you have guys like uh, AJ Dillon Alexander Madison Zach Evans uh, James Connor Elijah Moore uh, so you know some some fun names around him, but I'm I'm not scared to take, you know, Mingo at that at that point in time. You're like um, Mingo over Elijah Moore. You know, I think I think that's a that's a dice roll. Um, I could go either way there. I'm happy with either one on the team. You trade a mid Mingo to late second for more. It, it would seem like more right now. Stable situation is a little more fun going to where he is. But if Moore doesn't pan out this year for whatever reason, you know. Value probably going down even further where Mingo probably has a little bit more grace period here to, mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, he's kind of, you know, potentially plugged as kind of being, you know, a Debo can be a Debo like player where you can get him, get the ball in his hands. Like I said, career yak per reception, yak per route, per route run and, and, and overall yak and played, you know, the back half of the season all in the slot moving from and kept the A dot, you know, still reasonably high. Uh, moving from the outside. So um, interesting prospect there. You know, Frank Reich, like going back to that guy, Parks Frazier um, and Thomas Brown are all going to be kind of together. They're all coming from interesting backgrounds. Um, and I, I trust Frank and I trust McCown in, in the quarterback room and Thomas Brown coming from that Rams and, and homogenizing uh, with Frank Reich there. I'm, I'm very interested to see kind of what's going forward. And I'm, I'm again, fine with buying most of this, the cheap parts of this offense. And, and some of it I'm sure will change. The wide receiver room has to, um, but maybe Terrace can, can stake his claim or maybe Chark can stake his claim. Uh, Mingo probably going to get multiple shots at staking his claim. Uh, so Feeling they don't have an out with him until like he's there for two more years basically gave him 14 million guaranteed yeah. uh, so uh, you know he's the only player listed with the over under for receiving yards on DraftKings. from a wide receiver standpoint it's 550 and a half also gives them a veteran you know right. to kind of right I, I don't actually hate taking Thielen yeah I mean I, the late rounds yeah. of these drafts especially if I like have a bunch of youth 
from the wide receiver standpoint, Huge. and I'm yeah. not sure who I, I might need to start Thielen. Like I, my money would be on him leading the league in tar- league, the team in targets. Yeah, I'm taking Terrace. I think Terrace will be on the field the most. Uh, I don't think I want to bet a pie to the face on Thielen. Mm-hmm. But well, if, if you do, we can go. You're down. You're down and take a pie to the face, not on Thielen. Yeah. Um. So. Anyway, um, Carolina Panthers, seven and a half. They got MGM uh, Sportsbook has them coming in at third in the division. I think they're kind of a sneaky candidate to be in contention to win this division. But I certainly can see rookie quarterback, whole new deal. I could see it taking a while to get their footing under him. Finished strong last year. But like I said, that's not really all that relevant. But good defense, wonky division. Um, So, I think I think third is is properly rated at seven and a half. I'd say uh, you know I, I'm I'm fine. I, I I'd I'd go right right at that. I could say seven or eight. I could go kind of ride that line in between there. But dark horse to potentially surprise and and be the winner of this division if if uh, they can get some decent play out of the wide receiver core and Young, uh, you know, looks doesn't look like a rookie for the whole season. Which I don't think I think I don't think he will. I think that's kind of what you what you're excited about young with. Um, so um, anything else on the Carolina Panthers? No, I think I'm good. We can uh, head over to, we're going to do the Falcons. You got that with uh, we got Falcons KJ. With KJ, the fantasy tech. Uh, and then we got the, uh, the quad pod for the, the uh, Saints uh, bucks. So, uh, and then we got the AFC side of all this stuff on Patreon. We'll be doing the AFC South here in a week or two and then finishing up with the AFC West over there and then the NFC West maybe for you goons out there uh, for the public. Uh, so, But maybe we'll switch that up because we got a bunch of West guys uh, over here. So maybe we'll do the West and private and uh, get you with the AFC. Uh, well, you know, we do, we do the Patreon naked usually. So. <laughs> It's called the uh, Only Patreons. <laughs> it's the pleasure chest. <laughs> it's the pleasure. The pleasure chest. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Uh, five stars if you're on the podcast. Revelrybrewco.com to get one of those t-shirts. It looks just like that sign above me. Super comfy. Um, if that's how you want to support the team, go for it. Go throw us a couple bucks. You hit us up on the Patreon. You get in the Discord. You get the ADP. Uh, we're about to do some rankings discussions in in length on the uh, on the Patreons, and then we'll give the uh, the public the uh, watered down quick list because that's all you idiots want anyway. So it's a good way to end insult the audience. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's like Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Appreciate y'all. <laughs>